Hey and welcome back to another Revit tutorial video. In this video we'll be creating a central file. To start we'll go to models and we'll go hit new. We'll choose an architectural template, create a new project, press OK. Project will load up and once it's loaded up we'll add in a few walls to give us a little bit of content. So let's go up to walls here doesn't really matter for this purpose. We'll throw in some walls right there. And so now it's time to save. We're going to create a central file. So typically, when you're ready to save, you'll see the, the normal save button. Control S is right there. And that's always going to be lit up. But the icon next to it, which is synchronize and modify settings, is what we're looking to use. And if this is illuminated, you'll know you're working within a central file. As we can see right now, this this button is not illuminated, so it is safe to assume that we are not working in a central file. Therefore, if we're not in a central file, we are only in a local file, which means this is saved locally. There, there's nothing involved with networks, nothing like that. It is simply one file that I have open. So to start, we're going to go to the Collaborate tab, and we're going to go to Collaborate. What this is telling us to do is say, hey, we're going to have to save the model before we can collaborate. And essentially what we're doing at this point is, we, yes, we are creating a central model, but what, what does that really mean? That means we are allowing work sharing. That means work sharing, in this case, multiple people working in the same file at the same time, touching the same element, modifying different things, all at the same time, affecting one model. So, okay, we'll collaborate. We've hit the collaborate. We're going to save the model and continue. Let's go to where we want to save it for the purposes of this. I will just go to the desktop. We'll save it as project one. Hit save. And right now it's asking us how do we want to collaborate? And basically, where this is almost asking where is the file going to be saved? So at this point, we have a couple of options. We can choose within our network, and maybe you have different drives, maybe maybe you just have one drive. It doesn't matter. The other option being BIM 360, and this is basically the model being stored on the cloud through Autodesk. So if you're not using this, and we're, this tutorial will not cover BIM 360 at all, and I don't even have the option to use that because I'm not logged in with BIM 360 or anything like that. So the default option is within our network, which is basically like a local version. Basically, everyone is going to be on the same network looking and using the same Revit model. And we'll hit OK. So now it looks like we're still working within a local file, because if you look up here, the synchronize button is not illuminated. And that's because we haven't finished saving the model as a central file. So. I'm not going to, I don't need to make any more modifications to this, but I'll go ahead and click the regular save button, and I'm quickly prompted with the first time, this is the first time that you're saving the model as a central file. Do you want to proceed? Then yes, I do. Work sharing is now on, and once I hit yes, the model will become a central model. And I'll hit, I'll hit yes. Okay, and once I do that, you'll notice that the synchronize button is now illuminated. That's that's great. That's exactly what we're looking for. But you can notice that the, the regular save button is not illuminated, which is kind of weird. But that's just what happens. So right now, if I go to the synchronize button, by default, I'll get this dialog box that pops up. And I have the option to to sync and save. And when you before you like right after you save the model as a central file, uh, this central model location will be grayed out, and you actually will not even have the option to save a local file before and after syncing with a central. So typically what I like to do is right after I initially save the model as a central file and I first see the synchronized button illuminated, I actually want to close the model. And I, I do this just for me because it makes me feel better. Because right now, it's it almost feels like the model's in limbo because it's pointing at something and I can't save locally. So just to feel better, let's close it. 
yes, I'll save it, of course. And I'll go back to open, and I'll click on Project 1, and to, we want to make sure that we have checked Create New Local. And when you see this check, that means you're working within a central file. You also have the option to detach from central, which basically takes a copy of the model that, or I guess a version of the model that the model, the central model is at, and then detaches that, basically pulls it away from the central file. Something else I like to use is this audit, and what this is going to do is it's going to take a little extra time to open, but while it's doing that, it's going to audit your model and fix corrupted areas, basically background processes and, and things that you can't see within the model. And I, you could do this as often as you want. Um, typically, once a day, once a week is fine, but you could do it every time you open the model, it's fine. It's not a big deal. It's just a good thing to do periodically. So I don't need to do that right now because I just created this project, but we're going to create a new local file that tells us that we're within a central model or trying to open a central model. We'll hit open, and immediately I'm prompted with this. And this basically says th that this file already exists, as in my local copy of the central file, my local copy, which is mine personally, it currently exists. Do I want to overwrite it or do I want to append the timestamp to the existing copy? Now, the overwrite, what that does is it will overwrite the the date and the file of my local copy. Like if for example, if I was working in this model yesterday and I left saved and closed and I come back in the next morning and I hit overwrite I'm going to lose all the information I have within that local file. And honestly, that's generally what I do. Now, if you're for some reason worried about the stability of your network or uh, your network, the model, anything like that, you can choose the append timestamp. And what this will do is it basically archives or keeps a previous local copy that you were working in and now you have another one with the latest timestamp or like the latest time. So if for some reason the model breaks and you're, it's all corrupted and you can't open it or anything or the network is down or something like that, you always have a backup local copy because you've simply taken a, created a new copy with a new time and left the old one. Now, I don't see a good reason to do this most of the time because you're not thinking that you're going to lose models left and right. So I honestly, what I typically do is in the morning, I'll just I'll delete all my local copies and make new ones, just so everything is fresh. I, I use less server space. So another easy way to do that is just overwrite it. And if we overwrite it, we're just going to have that one local copy. So now that we've done that, we can go to the sync button. And now, now that we've gone through the process of creating the central, saving it as a central, closing the model and reopening it as a local, we can see as a local we we have the we can now see where this central model is located. And I can hit browse and there and I can see clearly, yeah, there there it is. That's what I opened. It's right there. That's good to know. And it's also nice to see that this is in a way live. Uh, the compact central model. I, I typically do this, maybe this is a end of the day type of thing or end of the week type of thing. All this does is, it, you know, it's imagine you're compressing the model. It, this is kind of another background task. It's not going to remove anything or anything like that, but some people report that this, you know, gets rid of background junk and speeds up your model. That's kind of a hit or miss. Who really knows? But it, it's either way, it's something good to do periodically because it will compress your file and keep things running in theory smoother. Also, by check by default is save local file before and after syncing with the central. And I always do this because it basically saves you from having to manually save your local file and then manually sync your local file to the central model. To visualize this, you could picture you're holding your local file in your hands and when you save locally, you just update that file. And when you sync to central, you're basically handing that local file to 
like putting it into a box and everyone working with it is putting their own local copy into the box and this box has all these versions that make up the central model and so what this this option down here is doing is saying okay once you sync right before we sync we're gonna save your local copy send that to the model and then after that it's gonna pull the data and everything from the central model and save your local file again. So basically you're up to date. And that's exactly what we want to do. It's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to do by default. All you're doing is pressing the sync button. Now the drop down for the sync also has the synchronize now option, which is just sent basically just syncing. It's not not worrying about the local so much. So typically all I'll do is you'll hit that button, you'll hit OK and you're saving your local, you're syncing, and then you're saving your local again, you're, you're up to date with the model. That was a very in-depth and long conversation for just creating a file, but it's very important to do it correctly and basically the way that you want to initially because there are a number of problems with central files breaking and things that can go wrong because you because the impacts that it has with multiple people working in one file at the same time. That's one of Revit's greatest strong points and to understand how to do that is very powerful. So I hope you all learned something today. Today we covered how to create a central model and the best practices for making sure things are running smoothly and that you're still working within the central model. If you did learn something, please leave a, please leave a like. That's how I know that you liked the video and maybe you learned something but thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one